morning, good morning, and welcome to this week's Monday Motivation. Now, oops, sorry, my camera dropped just as I went live there, so just forgive me while I uh, play around with my camera. You can probably see my lovely notes and bookshelves in the background. So, welcome. If this is your first time watching either live or on the replay of this week's Monday Motivation, I just want to say welcome. Monday Motivation is made with you in mind. It's made to motivate your morning, your Monday or even your week. And for some of you, you tell me it's the theme to your month. So thank you for joining. So welcome to episode number 57, which is actually a part two of the Monday Motivation from last week. So if you're watching, just type a little hi in the box so I can see whether my comments are working and whether I need to look down and make sure that I don't miss any of your juicy comments, your lovely shares, or anything else like that. So let me know, you know, where in the world are you watching from? Quite often these Monday motivations um, are watched live and then re-watched a bit later on. Thank you for those of you who over the year and a month now that these have been going, have been sharing them with other people. Um, thank you so much. I get so many lovely messages about the parts that this play in your life. So. I'm just going to look down and just double check something because I've got a feeling that the comments aren't working. I can see you all um, hopping on, but I can't see anything that you're saying. OK, so forgive me if you see me looking down. I am just making sure I'm going to just put this on low volume so you don't get me in stereo. Hey, we've got Ivana, who I know is in London. We've got Lisa, who is in Portsmouth. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Ivana. Um, Yes, Ivona says she's watching from London, but I already knew that. Ivona is one of our regulars, so thank you for um, thank you for watching. So, um, last week was part one of this Monday Motivation. Now, why did I pick Ability Activation? It's interesting, because one of the things that I think is really important when you are motivating your day, your Monday, your week, is the ability to kind of dig deep within yourself so that you can get out there more in the world. And this episode is absolutely no different. So last week, it was like the DIY guide to, um, to, mo to activating your ability. And I'm just gonna quickly run over the first four comments, just literally by bullet point. Now, if you missed it, what you need to do is just go back to this timeline and scroll down to next week. You'll pass other videos, like on Thursday, I do Visibility Made Easy, which is designed for those of you who want to raise your profile, maybe in your own business or someone else's business. Um, and you'll also see um, some posts that I shared around helping you to spread your ripples far and wide. But if you scroll down to last week's, it's got exactly the same title as this week, apart from it's part one. Part one. You'll also see that I was at Marble Arch in London walking down the street, walking and talking to you guys. So last week we talked about um, ability activators. Um, number one was knowing what you want, being very specifically clear on what you want. Go back and have a watch of last week's video after this if you um, would like to go through all the steps. Number two was your decision to do it, actually deciding to do something. It, whether you're looking at changing your diet, whether you're looking at um, up in your health and well-being, whether you're looking at achieving a goal that's a lot different to a goal that you've maybe set in the past and doing something different, whether you are looking at finding the, the person of your dreams, whether you're looking at extending your professional or personal connections, step one is definitely know specifically what you want. Know exactly what you want so that you can um, make sure that that's the thing that you're either not necessarily going for, but you know exactly what it is, the direction that you're heading in. Number two is deciding to do it. I hear so many people say, oh, maybe next year, maybe soon. Number three was all about overthinking. And my two words to you, overthinking, stop it. Stop the overthinking, stop the worrying. It does not do you any justice. And it actually takes up a lot of energy and headspace um, and causes you just to kind of wobble off track, okay? Um, number four, I talked about recognising um, recognizing the um, the specific parts of that and in that recognition of those specific parts hey Alan's on good morning Alan I knew there was some of you watching I know that some of you like to lurk and that's okay too 
Um, but thank you for coming on and saying hi. And if you wondered why I'm looking down like that and saying hello to Alan, Ivo and Elisa and the other um, juicy people who have joined, whether you're a viber or not, it's just because the comments aren't working on here, but they are on here. So number four was to be able to be, um, to be able to recognise, sorry, I'm looking at my notes, um, so, or my bullet points, I should say. I wanted you to be able to recognise um, the, the specific parts of when you've got that. So if you, haven't, if you haven't seen last week's Monday Motivation, scroll down the line, have a look. And if you would like to um, be notified when these motivations start, all you need to do, either at the end of this Facebook Live, is click on subscribe and it will notify you. Facebook will notify you of any time I go live so you can choose whether you're going to watch and play with me live or whether you're going to save it to later on the replay. If you're watching this and in a hurry, maybe getting the kids ready, getting ready to go out the door, then the next thing you could do is there's a little arrow that will show whether you're watching this on a phone or whether you're watching this on your computer. If you click on the arrow, it will give you one of the options to save the video, which means you can keep going back to it and watching it into five minute segments if you would like to. So this week, the three remaining DIYs, and I've written pink notes with green paper, probably not the best thing for me to do. So if you see me going like this, it could be a sign that I need to go and get my eyes checked for the optician. OK, so I'm just making sure I haven't missed any of your comments. Oh, and I have the lovely Faye's joined us as well. Hi, Faye. She says, good morning. Hope you're all OK this morning. We are good and golden, Faye. Thank you for saying hi. So the next three um, or part two of this um, ability activating episode is all around. We've done the, the first four. If you don't know what they are, go and check last week's video, um, which is episode number 56. Obviously, this is number 57. So number five was to um, stop swimming against the tide. Now, when you really want to get something done, you want to activate your own ability, there's such a thing as going with the flow. And some of you might, ha uh, might have up until now been saying, well, how do I go with the flow? How do I go with the flow when I want to get something so badly? And there's a little like universal secret in there that no one seems to tell you. Those people that do it well, um, those people that have overcome it or done it, the reason that they don't tell you, I think, is because sometimes they don't completely consciously register what they've done. So what do I mean about stop swimming against the tide? I want you just to think, stop and think for a moment here. Have you ever wanted something so badly, so badly, that it's almost driven you crazy trying to get it? Whatever that thing that popped into your head and you went, no, not that, it's probably that too. So think about the thing that has, like, you, you know, you've really wanted to get it done and it's become like the most important thing on the planet and you will do whatever it takes to get it done. Okay, that might be something that you're going through now. It might be something that you've been through recently. It might be something that's a long distant memory. Now, in my school of thought, if you want to really get in flow, or as some of the top performing athletes talk about, if you want to get in the zone, there's only one way to actually do that. And it's to have something not matter so desperately much to you. So when I say stop swimming against the tide, think about the time, it could be now, it could have been recently, it could have even been in the past, where, and it could even come up in the future, who knows? where you just want something so badly that you would do whatever it takes to a point where you're pushing through things. Maybe you're pushing through sleep. Maybe you're pushing through other people's opinions. And it just feels, to be honest with you, as if you're pushing water uphill. That is not the look that we're going for. Thank you for those of you that are hopping on. I can see you hopping on and I'm looking down because the comments aren't working. So if you've got any questions at all, any comments to make, do make them in the box below. The comments that you make, the questions that you ask, not only um, help somebody else to search deeper within themselves, it actually, um, sorry, not only helps you to search deeper within yourself, it actually helps other people too. Sometimes you guys ask questions that other people didn't even realise they had. So thank you for those of you that do. So stop swimming against the tide. If something matters that much to you, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to get in into your zone of genius, into your flow, into your element, you know, into the zone, it's going to be really, really difficult because there's something externally outside of you that drives you inside to say, I've got to make this happen. 
and nine times out of ten that's where it doesn't feel great to us that's where we struggle and the worst thing that I've seen recently is that's where it like people burn out they completely burn out um, and it's funny because I started writing an article on this on Friday so if you are on my email list you will receive in time the article out on the streets they call it burnout is what I'm calling it it's not cool it's not clever so think about um, you know where you want to go what you want to achieve by all means get clarity on it and then almost it's like you take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, you allow yourself to see the opportunities, the places, the people, the things, the times which you can then match what's going on around you with the thing that you want inside. And that is being in flow. I'm sure many of you watching this have had experience of being in the zone, being in flow. So here's a fun thing for you to do now. Think of a time when you wanted to do something and if you'd put it all out, written it down on paper, it would have felt like something really, really difficult. Only this time, it seems like all your ducks lined up in a row. All the steps seem to follow each other logically and you didn't have to push and pull and part the seas and do lots of struggling. It just seemed to drop in one piece after another. I know people that have like change their entire business models in this way. I know people that have revolutionised um, the way that they look. I know people who have um, changed the way that they think about a certain thing, maybe their eating habits. I know people who have changed their perception of who they think should be the person that they're with forever and ever in the rest of their lives to actually just accept more of who they are so that these things seem to sort of stack up and align. So um, if you've got any stories of that, I'd love to hear them. I know that some of you prefer to have a little bit more of a private conversation over in the quieter page. And if that's you, remember that there's the Visibility Vibes Tribe Facebook group. And just to find them, if you search for at Visibility Vibe without the S, you'll find it. If you want to do it the long way, be my guest. Go to all the W's, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash be seen, be heard, get visible. But if you want to make it easy on yourself, just go in um, and have a look at, at Visibility Vibe, or, and, and you'll find them there. Okay, so, sorry, Visibility Vibe is this page. Um, the Visibility Vibes Tribe is the actual group. Now, it's a closed group, which means that any comments, any questions, any shares that you have can only be seen by the other Juicy Vibers. And oh my gosh, what Juicy Vibers they are. Talk about a soft place to land on Facebook. So if you know that you want encouragement, you want to give encouragement, you maybe need a different perspective, you need help, I'm gonna be posting a question in there right after this on logo design, believe it or not. So if, you, if that's you and you wanna be able to have these conversations and continue the conversations outside of this public pace, um, space, then hop on in. So, um, just having a look to see what the comments are so thank you for those of you that are joining and I love that you all say good morning to each other it warms my heart so um, hopefully I haven't missed any comments um, let's just go back so I've only said so you have to be in a more relaxed state to achieve what you want question mark absolutely um, and it's interesting because sometimes you can get there yourself I've, I've got clients that have got there themselves um, so here's here's a quick way to do that, Ivona, and anyone else who's watching and could be interested in how to how to do this. Think of a time when you did do something that on paper should have been difficult, maybe. This could have been recently and this could have been years ago. Think of a time when you did something that should have been difficult and it just seemed to flow. So I had a friend who wanted to start a cake business and um, without really thinking too much about it, she just thought about the cake business she wanted to start, what she wanted the ethos and the values of that company to be. And with that, she let it go, which is gonna come on to my next point. She let that go and um, she just went and she started talking about this business that she wanted to start. And she said, in my head, it started today. This is what it does for people. These are the company values. And the minute she said that, it's like people, opportunities, places started to show up. She didn't put any more thought or plan behind it. She didn't try to make it happen. She didn't go out and look for URLs and things like that. Literally, she just had the intention and she said, I'm not gonna make this difficult. In fact, I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna allow this to be easy. And within two weeks, she'd set up a website. She had um, equipment given to her. And she had people literally banging down the door to take orders. She said, 
this feels like the easiest thing that I've ever done. And that's what like going with the flow does. You know, if you were a top performing athlete and you weren't in the zone, you would be like every pound of the way on your race, be saying, gosh, I've got to move my thighs and really drive forward and make sure that my arms are making me more aerodynamic, make sure that I'm breathing in time, make sure that I'm beating the people around me. And actually from that state, from that state of being, you cannot perform in your best way. So I hope that's helpful to you. Now, if you want a way to be able to do that really easily, go back to that time, whether it was yesterday, whether it was last week, last month, last year, last decade, or even before. Go back to the time when you did your own thing, like the friend with the cake company, who, it, like it maybe shouldn't have been easy on paper, but it just was. And all I want you to do is take a minute or two after this video, just to sit and indulge on the, like the, the, the points in the sand, the bits that make you smile, the things that happened and you were like, oh my gosh, this was just in flow. And I want you to give that a one word label. Don't need to share it here or anywhere else, but have a label. It doesn't need to make sense to anybody but yourself. Give it a label, give it a one word label that you can almost carry around. Even if you want to write that one word label down on a little sticky note and put it in your purse or your wallet um, and just Give it that one word label and every time you look at that label or remember that one word that you give it, it'll get you back in that place of ease and flow. The same thing that you have done before. Okay, so I hope that helps Ivona. Um, and then she says, uh, can see the link with overthinking and making things difficult. Absolutely, because quite a lot of the time we think we're thinking it through and we are worrying or we are going into the detail and inadvertently we could start to go into the detail of why or how we can't and that's when the overthinking really doesn't serve us so point number six so point number five was stop swimming against the tide go with the flow point number six is surrender now in order to surrender you really need to get to a place where you have to stop allowing that thing to be of importance to you. So let me give you a real life example from my life. So as you would have seen last week, I was staying in a lovely hotel um, very near to Marble Arch. I was um, part of a two day event that I was elite coaching for somebody else. And uh, on Monday night, I was reading a book, like a really dear book to my heart by Marianne Williamson. I was reading in bed closed the book, went to sleep, got up the next morning, turned the sheets back, went and got ready, packed, checked out of the hotel, um, went and had day two of the event, which was fabulous. After the day, you know, you get a bit tired, I had to go and pick some things up, so I went and picked some things up, made the journey home, you know, in the busy tube, got home. And it wasn't until um, Wednesday night when I went to go and read my book again and I thought, oh my gosh, I left the book in the hotel. I remember it well. I read it before I went to bed. I went to sleep and I, you know, closed the book and had my bookmarker in, put it down, put the sheets back. And even though I did a quick sweep of the room before I went, I forgot to put the, you know, put the sheets back and realise that I would have left my book there. And I think I left some pens there. But here's the thing, that book, by Marianne Williamson is so dear to my heart. It's a book that I bought a couple of years ago and I go back over and over and over again. Oh, Ivona says that's a lot clearer. Thanks, Ivona, that's great to hear. So this book I go back over and over again. Sometimes I just open a page and read a little nugget from it. But this time I dedicated in my mind that I was gonna read all the way through the book. And to boot, I'd actually met Marion Williamson like a few times now after I've um, gone to one of her talks or something like that and had some really lovely conversations with, with her. She's amazing. Um, and at one of the talks, I went and asked her whether she could sign my book, which she did, and we had a lovely conversation. Now, the point that I'm making is, quite often when we surrender from things, how much emotion, how much energy, how much importance we attach to a specific item, a place, a scenario, a thing can really affect our ability to surrender a situation or a goal or anything else like that up. So what happened was when I realised that I'd left the book in the hotel, I thought, no problem, it's quite late at night, but they're a hotel, I'll phone. 
I'll phone through, I'll let them know what's happened, I'll ask if they can um, locate the book and I'll go and pick it up next time I'm in London. So I did that, next day, just called back again, double checked, they said, we found the book, we've got it here, when are you gonna come and collect it? So I said, maybe Friday, but if not, sometime um, within the next week, please keep it reception for me, I'll come and get it. No problem, they said. So yesterday, just yesterday, I went to the hotel, I went to Southampton with some friends for the weekend and um, literally got straight off the train, went straight back to the hotel, you know, got through the tube, it was very busy around Marble Arch, and walked back to the hotel, went to go and get my book and they couldn't find it. And what was worse was they were questioning my reservation, are you sure you stayed here, we don't have your details in the system and all that kind of stuff. So as I sat there and waited, I noticed myself starting to get a bit upset like to the point of being quite tearful. I was like, oh, that's my book. I've got all my little sticky notes in it. There's so many golden nuggets in it. Marianne Williamson herself, she signed this book for me. It's so precious to me. I know it's only a little book. When it first came out, I was one of the first, not, not literally the first people to buy it, but you know, the, when she first talked about the book, I remember I, I bought it before it went out on public you know, sale. I love the um, content that she shares in it. I love how she talked about the book. I like the ethos. And oh my gosh, if that book was to go, what would happen? I think you catch my drift. And I realised I was getting upset. I was getting a bit angry with the hotel for asking me a gazillion and one questions. Hi for those of you that have popped on, just want to say hi. And I started to get upset and I just thought, no, stop. How can I make this scenario less important. How can I make it less important? The fact that Marianne had signed the book, the fact that I was one of the first people to get it, the fact that it had all my stickers in there to you know, highlight all the great bits and pieces. And I even told myself, well, but there's no point me buying another one because it won't be the same. Well, of course, it's the same book with the same content. I know, I see Marianne Williamson speak so often, I know that I could go and ask for her to sign the book again. But I realised that I was making like a really big issue within myself. I was making it so important. Last night, as I walked away and I was miffed and I was telling the man how miffed I was and I'm so angry, I don't even want to speak at the moment, I just want to stroll down the street. I realised that sometimes you have to surrender something. And specifically when you lose something, it can stack up any previous losses you know years ago I lost an iPod with like one and a half thousand tunes old school iPod not this one um, one and a half thousand tunes and I had them all categorized so when I do my corporate training I had a song playlist that would be suitable for that when I ran my workshops suitable for that when I run my VIP days where I get to work with people like do a strategy day had all my tunes lined up with that and when I lost that, you would have thought that I had lost a relative. I was crying almost, you know, um, almost consistently for four days. I hadn't learned the best way to surrender something. So the reason I share that story with you is because it doesn't have to be about the huge things in life, which we often make it. Sometimes it's about the everyday stuff in life. We worry, we attach such importance to an item to a location, like a certain space, to a person, to a thing, to a habit, that we come out of compassion, we come out of love for ourselves, and we go into some fearful, shaky, dodgy state. And what I've learned over the years is that does not serve us. Now, I'm not gonna say that I've nailed this and I will never experience or feel like that again, but I wanted to share that, that seemingly kind of small story because I know that for many of you, you guys are just like me and I'm just like you, sometimes we can get into all of that fear of what's happened and all of the stuff. Has, does anyone resonate? Has anyone ever, you know, lost something? Think about like losing your personal wallet. The, sometimes the, the, the state that it puts you in, it shakes you into a state of, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that could happen. When the truth of the matter is, Apart from the fact that you, you know, might have some money in there that somebody might not ever give back to you, you can stop credit cards, you can stop bank cards, you can replace the things, you know, the person that you've got the picture of in your wallet, 
you've got a picture of them in your mind that you can always remember. And for many of you, you can go and see them at any time. You can go and see them online, you know, you can Skype them. Um, and when we attach so much attention to something and so much importance to something, it can actually get in our way. So true surrender, true surrender is the ability to detach the importance that that thing, that person, that something means to us. When we do that, we come from a, a clearer space to be able to move through that, to move on, to um, think of something different and to achieve the things we want. So um, Ivana says, yes, she resonates, mobile phones, absolutely. What about all the numbers in there? Well, at one point we got those numbers, at another point we can get them back. But sometimes we make it something different. Does that make sense? So number five was stop swimming against the tide. Go with the flow, get into the flow and go with the flow. Um, number six was all around surrender. The story I just told you, the share of the Marianne Williamson book, which I'm gonna have to buy myself again, you know? And number seven, here's a really important question to ask yourself. If you've realized that you've been pushing and swimming against the tide and things have been difficult, maybe you wanted to raise the money to do something, Gosh, I've been there so many times. You know, there's been masterminds and groups and coaches that I've wanted to work with, haven't had the money there and then. And you can, you can find yourself swimming against the tide. From the place of swimming against the tide, it tells you a lot about the things that you don't want, the way that you don't want things to be. Then from step six, surrender. If you let go the importance of something, you realize what doesn't matter. You also get insights to yourself of how you've been holding yourself back. So step number seven is asking yourself this simple question. And this is worth writing down. What am I going to do about this? You realise that you've travelled a certain path. You realised of what was before. You realised of where you are now and you realise of what you want in the future. So the next really simple question to ask yourself, having gone through these seven points, is, well, what am I going to do about this? So using the example of the book, Heartbroken, signed by Marianne Williamson, what am I going to do about it? I'm actually going to decide, number two, point number two, I'm going to decide to not let this be the most important thing in my life. I want to sharpen serve you guys. I want to empower myself, not disempower myself, because if I empower myself, I empower you guys too. Well, no, I don't empower, I allow you guys to empower yourselves better said I don't empower you you have and this is what the ability activation is you have the ability within you to to do the things that you want to do to be brilliant you just need to unlock it for yourselves so I've decided I'm gonna go online and order another copy of the book I'm gonna make sure that next time I go to see Marianne speak I'll take the book with me and I'll ask her to sign it that's it really nothing else to report so thank you so much for joining me. Can't wait to see the conversations that you have over in the Visibility Vibes Tribe group. And it's a motivational Monday. And it's not just for me to motivate you or for you to motivate me. Let's motivate each other. So over in the Monday Motivation, I'll be curious about a couple of things. What little snippets, what nuggets can you share to either motivate yourself or other people? And you know, how are you motivating yourself this week? So I'm gonna share with you that I have got a couple of things I want to do this week. I'm going to share that in the group, and um, if there are, if you want to play along and, and put your shares in there, so that you can hold yourself accountable, so that you can empower, empower yourself and activate your own ability to be brilliant, then go ahead. Um, can't wait to see you. And if there's anything that I've shared here that you know somebody else could do with hearing, please share this. Please don't keep me a secret. And one step further, if you really get the juices of what I've shared today and you'd like to go up there and give me some sort of review, maybe this isn't the first thing that you've listened to of mine or watched of mine, I'd really love to um, love for you to give me a review and leave a comment so that I know how I can serve you even better in the world. Thank you so much for watching. You've been absolutely gorgeous. Go forth, be brilliant. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.